Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the third part of my four part question. So let's get into it. Uh, so the question came from someone who took a job, thought he was going to do C sharp development, but turns out that he is doing a lot of other stuff instead. And so the question was, Frederick, I was hired as a junior and I have nobody to learn from. I have one friend, but he's like Mr. Everything and more of an analyst than a developer. Apart from him, there are no other people in the company who could help me solve certain problems. So I have to do many things myself. It often happens that I'm not sure if I'm doing my job in the right way, and I'm afraid that one day the company may suffer serious losses because of it. I feel fe real fear as like my life is in danger. I'm what? Uh, okay, yeah, uh, well, uh, your life is not in danger, my friend. Uh, the, that That's not something that I think that you should have to be all that worried of, m worried about. I mean, saying that is, of course, not going to make that feeling go away. Uh, but if you feel that strongly about it, I highly recommend that you take uh, some time, talk to a professional, a doctor or something, a uh, psychiatrist, or maybe something similar. You might need some pills to to help with the mood or like it might be worth at least talking to somebody um, and for the other part uh, the fact that you don't have anybody to learn from this is kind of this is this is uh, sort of the scenario that I describe as the worst possible scenario for a junior developer because if as you're saying like you you don't know what you're doing you have no positive feedback or any feedback uh, for that matter on whether or not you're doing something well or you're not and almost everybody needs that I'm not saying that you can't do without it I'm simply stating that if you're if you have someone who is more experienced who can confirm or deny whether or not things are you're doing things in the right way or the wrong way it becomes really hard for you to figure out what works and what doesn't work and what's a good idea what's a bad idea and the thing that I think that you should remember that should hopefully calm you a little bit of oh, it's probably not going to but let's at least say it is that this is not on you this is literally what the company this is the situation this is a, an example of a shittily run company it's that simple. At the end of the day, this is what happens when you have incompetent uh, stakeholders or managers who they don't know what they're hiring, they don't know what they're lo they even need, and this uh, this is a real problem. It is always that this is always a problem, and uh, it's uh, well, it's not always a problem. The one time this is not a problem is when you're actually dealing with actually experienced managers who know what it means to do, develop software and in real IT companies they usually have a few of these people around so they sort of know what they're dealing with but this is far from the it's far from the norm there are many 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 companies where you and I've said this before one of the things that you kind of have to learn as a software developer is that if you get fired or if you work in a in a situation where you feel really bad or where like you like you're you, you can't always have this thought that everything is down to how good you are you have to understand that you might be put in a situation where you can't win now I'm not saying that you should never hold yourself accountable you should always try to th reflect on your stake in things and what parts you have been responsible for whatever whenever you have a situation where things aren't going so well but you have to you also have to catch, cut yourself a little bit of slack because if if i put a fresh software developer in a situation where i basically ask them to do a job that they have never been trained to do without any introduction without any way to ask for help i am creating a very bad situation for that person. Now as a company I might not either be smart enough to figure out that that's not a good idea or I may have no choice. 
because that's the thing. Like we don't we don't want to assume that people are doing things always uh, out of malice or like greed or things like that. It simply might be the case that they don't have any other option because they have mismanagement mismanaged things, and just as you and me we make mistakes, managers makes they make mistakes as well. Company owners make mistakes, and here you are now trying to live in a situation that is a little bit unsustainable, at least for you. And so what I suggest, what I really suggest that you do here is that you understand that you are not completely to blame for the circumstances of this situation. It's not your responsibility to run the company. Your responsibility is to do the best job you can given the circumstances that you have. So what I suggest that you do is that you talk a little bit to your manager about how you feel about the situation and see if you can formulate some type of plan for how to do things in a more effective way. Now, I th I'm just going to be honest with you, based on what you've told me so far, I think that it's very unlikely that you can even have that conversation with your with your manager try if it's possible and if it's not possible you really need to evaluate whether or not this is the place you want to continue working at and i'm saying that not to 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 tell you that you're you're working for a bad company i'm saying that you very clearly have a need you have an emotional need that i feel i think can only be fulfilled by being in, in an in an environment where you get some type of feedback you're how do i put this if you had been a senior veteran software developer you would have been able to identify that you were in a bad position and real as saw and seen things for what they are i at least i hope that much and all i'm saying is that i think that this position it might be too early for you to take on the role because the thing is, guys, there are, you, you are everybody's at a different stage in their in their personal development. I remember a time when, I, well, at my first job, I was put in a situation where I was too junior to deal with the situation. They needed me to be a lot more autonomous, a lot more self-reliant than I was able to be at that to in that time. Today, I would be able to do that job without even breaking a sweat, most li most, li most likely, but not when I was a junior. What I really needed and the thing that made it alter, because I had very similar sorts, like, I mean, I wasn't afraid that I was going to die, but I had severe stomach aches and a lot of anxieties due to my work environment. And all that changed for me when I got into a work environment where I had senior co-workers who could get me, give me a sense of right and wrong and a sense of direction. I mean, it wasn't perfect, no job is perfect, but at least that's the thing that I got and that was the most important thing for me because I had no way as you were, as this person is describing you don't really know if you're doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing and the best way to get that sensation of right and wrong is through having somebody who you look up to or somebody who you acknowledge as a peer with more experience tell you that yeah this is this is this is good work or it's not so good work and here's why and here is how you can improve it is the it's why I, I preach to everybody if you have the choice and you have the chance try to always prioritize in the at the very least in the beginning of things to work in a team of peers because your long-term health and career prospects are much more benefited by having the right work environment early on than it is the, what, what stack you're using or how much money you're making because it's going to be nothing in comparison to the benefits you're going to see once you become a senior software developer. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, if, if you feel the way that this person is feeling and you see you feel like you have you're the only person who who's able to do a certain job or like you're the only person there and you have nobody to ask help for help and you feel a little bit out of your depth understand that that is the situation that you are in is not your fault the company has put you in that situation and it's nobody's fault if you can't deal with that situation. It's not always the case that they're doing it because they're greedy or if there's a malicious type of thing going on here. It's simply that they need you to be somebody you're not. And that's not. there's no shame in that, guys. 
you might just be there too early in your career and if you come back two three five ten years later you might be able to just walk through whole, the whole situation and be like yeah this is nothing but right now it might be too early for you so you might want to look into a, a company where either things are moving a little bit more slowly or ideally a company where you have peers with more experience who can give you a sense of direction and some tips on how to do things these things are among the best ways for you to build up an emotional security which is the thing that I believe that this person needs and if you're similar to this person and you feel a bit of stress over I don't really know what I'm doing I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or I'm doing the wrong thing then what you're really describing here is uh, at least in my world a sense of insecurity and nothing brings in, it kills insecurity as quickly as having somebody you think you you feel knows their stuff tell you yeah do that and don't do that and you're just gonna be you're you're gonna be fine so try to find that person have a great day.